and how do we how do we come together and deal with our differences? If I may, I, I don't want us to think that racism is only living in the belly of the beast in America. Thank you. I, I think racism as a, as a construct made by as out of white supremacy is pervasive, pervasive across the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to face a white on a daily basis to understand it. But the condition of African African people itself is a direct consequence of it. And that's where I really agree with Vanessa in saying, well, these are different experiences. We may not be able to compare them, but I think we need to understand that we, re we face them tr in, in different contexts, mm -hmm. I would say. And, 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 and that's, I mean, I really wanted to make that point in the sense that w although we, wanna, we may want to think about it in the American context, uh, racism is something that's being faced in Paris as well as, you know, in, in Africa, I mean, in, in every single capital of Africa. So, and, and I think that point is. is and I think Vanessa is mind. correct, uh, certainly correct. Uh, it, it's a going forward type of mentality, type of thinking that she is bringing to the group, and I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to add that. On speaking of, I agree with Vanessa that we're not trying to compete about who's had the greatest pain. We've all experienced pain. We're still experiencing it. But I think what you said about the, the burden is that African Americans, the, the experience is compounded because of having to deal with this racism on a daily basis directly. That's why I say uh, that. African Americans, is, as far as I'm concerned, are the strongest Africans on the planet from that perspective because of having to deal with not only you as an individual person trying to deal with yourself and into your individuality, you as an African person, however you might perceive that to be, and then dealing with racism and, 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 and the daily things you deal with at the workplace and in the store and on the street and when you're driving on the freeway, those kind of everyday realities. I'd have to, can I interject? Joy? You make a very interesting point in mm -hmm. terms of mm -hmm. African Americans mm -hmm. dealing with the strongest and being, mm -hmm. I suppose, uh, mm -hmm. the ones that are stronger in terms of dealing with some of these issues that mm -hmm. we're talking about. I have to disagree with you. I think within society, this shared burden that we have as a people goes across. All our experiences are very different. You could be African walking down the street and be subject to something that an African American would be. I mean, living in America or even living in Africa, um, there are a lot of different, um, should I call it, I mean, we have structures as well in that community where one group or one tribe is above the other and so forth. So we're dealing with a lot of different issues. So it would be unfair to say one group is stronger. I mean, this is the kind of language that I think divides us as a people. Oh. So we really have to work together. And saying that is very divisive. Joy, you want to? Wind sure. out. Yes, thank you for giving me the opportunity to address it. And I think that this is a beautiful uh, discussion we're having. And one of the things is right at this very table, we can make sure that we are, you know, working to understand each other well. And where I was going when I said, and I still stand on my statement that I believe that Africans, Americans are the strongest Africans on the planet for this reason. Um, it's not, a, it's totally opposite from being divisive. As a matter of fact, I believe I'm speaking to the very reason we're all meeting here, which is that there's not an understanding from Africans that come in from the continent as to why African Americans are so resentful. So what I'm speaking to is the, res the resentment comes because of the daily onslaught of racism in all the aspects of the environment that it shows up in, in an intensity that others don't have to deal with outside. So it becomes a shock when somebody comes in and has to deal with it. I was born in Jamaica when I first came here, and I didn't understand that something was supposed to be wrong with my beautiful black skin. I never even thought about my skin before. I'd never heard these N words and other negative labels. So it was a burden that I felt placed upon me to even come into this society and deal with it. And the way I dealt with it was that African Americans helped me not only learn how to fight, but also learn how to deal with my, 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 my pain of dealing with something I'd never had to deal with before. And that's what I mean, because they've been strong enough to deal with it, and they taught me how to deal. African Americans, their background is from Africa. Okay. I feel like, you know, even if they are, we don't know each other, I like, I, I like them. 
the past that we've been through, they've been through something totally different. You know, so I can I can respect and understand their views as far as um, what they believe in. Uh, you know, at the same time, I, I, I have nothing against them, you know. African American always feel like they're better than African, especially I experienced that. Well, when you go somewhere, they always ask you a question, for example, if where you're from, if you have running water, or if you have food, or, you know, kind of look at you like you, they're better than you because you have an accent, and they always never take a chance to get to know you. They just assume that um, you don't like them. I see them as my fellow brothers. Okay. So I give them the respect they deserve, and I think that is fair. That is the best I can say. Some of our cultures, we came from the same place, so some of our cultures are the same. Some of them, not all of them, you know, they, like, you know, the gangster, live gangster, you know, that's really not good. And some of them are really much into it. They don't think of any other means about life and stuff, you know. Yeah, pretty much that. Uh, I like to immerse myself into other people, and it, it, I think it makes me a, a better person as far as relating to others. What are the values that African Americans and Africans share? So what are some of the things that, not a, a divisive, but what are things that bring them together? Okay, what do they share? I can start with that. I think there's, um, from slavery, there's the carryovers that have come into America, whether it's the music and our love for, uh, you know, dance and so forth. I think I see that um, across both continents. That's very prevalent within our cultures. We have that, and that's a part of our culture that is shared still um, based on the African carryover. Those traditions are innate within both groups of people and across the diaspora, whether you're in uh, South America or other parts of the world. I think we, we definitely share that, and religion as well. I think we share the same D DNA, DNA the same. So, because if you share the same DNA, it means that the problems, even from a thousand years ago, if they took slaves by force from over there to here, and uh, people had resentment because of the treatment, that resentment hasn't gone away. And resentment is a very, very, very difficult thing to overcome. And an example of how resentment can be overcome, the only example that I know of is in South Africa, where they had the Truth Commission on Reconciliation and all those talks with Desmond Tutu, sitting around with people confessing what they did in front of the victims and all those kind of things. To me, except somebody gives me another example, that's the only place I've seen where they have started or begun to resolve the problem of resentment. It's an invisible thing, but it's there. Okay. I have to agree with Ken. I think this brother is right on it. He is right on, as they say, the money. Because when we were broken up, as a people, there were certain propaganda spread among us. We were told in this country, well, you should not be mad at us because we only enslave you. You should really be angry at those Africans who sold you to us, yeah. okay? Yeah. And then they told the Africans another propaganda where well, they were not, you know, these were the mis misconstrued, uh, why don't you just, they, they were no good. You got rid of your junk, so. That's okay too. And so it brought about division in our families. Yeah. And it brought about mistrust mm -hmm. and the inability to work together. Mm -hmm. And it brought about some dislike yep. and even a little hate in some regard. Yep. And so what we need, as Ken said, we need a, a truth and reconciliation among our own people yeah. to talk about what happened and so that it could never happen again to any of our families, and then talk about how we can fix this thing. So I, I agree with that. I think that's Thank you. Thank you. Right. And I think that's what we're doing here. You know? that's mm -hmm. yeah.